Welcome to a book table nanosode brought to you by Backroom Whispering Productions. In today's little nanosode, we're going to have three of us talking about our Nano Remo projects. So, Madeline, why don't we start with you? Okay. Hello, everybody. I'm Madeline. I've been on here a couple times before. So my NaNoWriMo project, this is my third NaNoWriMo, and my project is a dark fantasy thriller with Arthurian undertones, specifically relating to the stories of the Lady of the Lake and the swords Excalibur and the sword in the stone. Woot woot! Yay! Sounds very really cool. All right, and now we're going to move on to Dave, who actually this is his debut on a book table Woo! episode. Very so welcome, it. Dave. Hello, Hi, Dave. Everybody. I'm Dave, as she told you, um, and I am also working on a Nano Remo project. Uh, I am writing a dark story uh, about a world that is basically under the influence of these gods who are deciding every thousand years between making this one world a paradise or a terrible, evil place. And so every thousand years. A war happens between the good and evil aspects of the world, and there's a paragon chosen for both sides. And whichever paragon manages to defeat the other influences the next thousand years. I mean, that's the absolute nutshell of the whole thing. Yay! (laughs) Yay, nutshell. Woohoo! All right, and I am Rebecca, and I'm terrible at synopses, so this is going to be extremely short nutshell. I am writing a dark pirate fantasy that is essentially about a sort of interesting pirate lord who is trying to, every 500 years, the waters of the dark sea rise over a place called the Bottleneck, and at least according to legend and rumor, lead to a place called the Freelands where anything is possible. And so this pirate is trying to get over there, and unbeknownst to him, or maybe not, Someone on his ship is actually trying to access a weapon that is rumored to be in the Freelands that has the power to kill divine beings. And so then someone else is trying to stop that potentially person from doing that because basically it would plunge the entire world into chaos and all of this good stuff. So that's it. And that's a terrible synopsis, but that's all I got. You had me at Dark Pirate Fantasy. I know. I was going to say the same thing. You had me at Dark Pirate I probably should have stopped at the Dark Pirate Fantasy part, but oh well. Okay, anyway. <laughs> Yay, at least we all know what we're writing. Um, so <laughs> did anybody have specific things that maybe made them want to write these stories that we decided to write. I mean, like I said, this is my third nano Rimo and my previous stories have all been pretty different with various influences. Did you guys have anything specific where you went, this is kind of why I want to write this story? Well, um, I personally have a certain process that I go through with making a story. Mm -hmm. I kind of have a genre that I want to work on. And then from there, um, I throw out ideas at the closest person to me and continually start talking myself through what the new story could be, and it kind of just grows from there. So I wanted to do a fantasy story that had a um, male protagonist and sword fighting the magic, the magical creatures in it, and from there I basically just started bouncing ideas off of Becca right here and ended up coming up with a fairly complex and interesting um, story. So no, no aim. It's not like I had the – I didn't have this – mapped out at all before I started talking in the car one time. So um, that's how I do it. Yeah, uh, for me, this is Rebecca, by the way. I've heard in the past that Madeline and I have very similar voices. Um, so I'm just going to identify myself for that reason. So I'm, I'm Dave. Um, <laughs> thanks, Dave. Thanks, Dave. Um, yeah, so my story was kind of like two weeks before Nano Remo. Um, I don't know, just a lot of different ideas came together about this pirate who had a harem on his ship and then uh, divine clashes and such things. It helped that, um, actually, so Dave, spoiler alert, um, Dave and I are actually engaged and we're on a road trip together when we were solidifying our NaNoWriMo ideas. Like um, gasp. So I talked, so I also talked through a lot of stuff with him, which was really helpful, although that's not normally part of my novel writing process. Um, but hey, every book is different. Every idea is different. And that's cool. I just knew I wanted to do NaNoWriMo this year. 
and uh, I was finishing up writing a trashy romance novel <laughs> two weeks <laughs> before, and I was like, yeah, I need to write fantasy again because I'm not really good at this trashy romance stuff. So that's where my idea came from. I'm so jealous of both of you having someone to bounce your ideas off of because I kind of had to develop mine in a bubble. I've never really had someone who's readily accessible to whom I can sort of bounce all of my ideas off of and say, this is what I'm thinking of doing. What do you think? Mainly because I don't know too many people in my real life outside of the interwebs who read a lot of fantasy with whom I have significant, like, constant contact. So knowing I wanted to do fantasy and kind of wanted to hew along a particularly dark line. Um, I was sort of like, I really don't have anybody to talk to about this. So I had to develop it kind of in a bubble. And usually just by consuming copious amounts of media based around the Arthurian legends with which I was sort of quasi familiar. And Everybody's quasi familiar because there's not a real, like, there's usually not a real version of it that most people can access. Yeah, exactly. Even in medieval times, there's so many different texts that they call the quote unquote source materials. I'm like, and they're all different. And then you have right. the so different. Yeah. yeah. I, read, I, read a, I read an old an old English version in sixth grade. Really? Amazing. There were so many things that were just like all these names were different, and there were you know different stories and kind of different main characters. I don't think there was even like a round table until very very late. And I think that was the earliest version of it I've ever heard. So yeah, there's not ever going to be a true version. Yeah, exactly. So I was sort of like, which is kind of good because for me, one right. of my like, when if you if you guys know this, the Strengths Finders test, one of my notes that I'm very big into like input and intellection and collection of information. So it actually, me being in a bubble and then being forced to set my mind to, I need to know about some very specific things and I want to know all I can know about it. That's sort of in my comfort zone of my personal strengths. So I guess it's okay that I was developing in a bubble, but that means, that does mean I wasn't really able to bounce any ideas off of anybody until I started emailing Rebecca about it and I was just like so yeah, this we, can al- we can always have this conversation again if you ever want to do that because that'll be yeah I can sit there and be like so what tell me what I got wrong and then this is me going but it doesn't work with what I want <laughs> but yeah basically Rebecca and I started emailing so we're getting ready to talk about NaNoWriMo and I was like so this is my like weird little idea I've been germinating for like a couple of years and I'm finally deciding to write it and she was yeah, just like do the thing amazing <laughs> Exactly. The Book Table is a podcast from Backroom Whispering Productions. Our theme music is by Mark Wayne. If you like this podcast, rate us on iTunes. Or get in touch with us on Twitter at Backroom Whisper, on Facebook at facebook.com slash backroomwhispering, or by email backroomwhispering at gmail.com. See you next time.